Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, for the words that we hear this day, may they be words and expressions of our gratitude. And may they speak to us in some way that challenges, transforms, and calls us to serve you. Amen. Today, the cycle of the Christian year comes to an end with a festival that celebrates and proclaims Christ the Lord of all things, known as Reign of Christ Sunday. And what that is in the Christian year, it's the culmination of the year that began the first Sunday of Advent last year in 2008. Well, today also marks the beginning of the week we enter into, as I mentioned, into children's time, our American holiday of Thanksgiving. Now, some would say, some would say that these two themes for worship, Thanksgiving, Reign of Christ Sunday, stand in competition with each other. Which do I do? Thanksgiving, Reign of Christ. Well, I believe, and I truly believe that there is more a connection between the two rather than there is a competition between the two. To live our lives as Christian people, knowing we can ultimately trust Christ, who reigns in our lives in all times and all places, frees us to offer our hearts, to offer our lives to God with gratitude and thanks. And that can be whether we stand in a very broad place, a place where blessings seem rather obvious, and also when times are difficult, when we're anxious about the future. We claim that the future belongs to God, and God is faithful. Let me contrast a little here the broad place of obvious blessings with the first Thanksgiving as the story is told. Those who gathered for the first feast were the survivors of a brutal winter when half their number had starved. For all they knew, they wouldn't be around to see the next winter. They faced an uncertain future. They don't know what's ahead for them. They had just come from some pretty harsh times. And now they're in a new and a wild place. And yet we're told that they gathered during that harvest time. And they said, thank you. Or consider the biblical text that we heard this morning, both the one that Craig read and the one that I read from the Wisconsin. The first one from Lamentations that Craig read is a book whose name speaks for itself, Lamentations. It's a book that's a collection of poems expressing anguish over the fall of Jerusalem to Babylon in 587 BC. Now, if you read through it, you'll be struck by several things. First, it's relentlessly bleak. It expresses the sense that God has abandoned God's people, and for good reason. These laments for a fallen city hold within them a sense that Jerusalem had fallen because it forsook the ways of God. They live with no regard for justice or compassion. They had lived with no sense that there was more to life than fulfilling their own desires. And now they were facing the consequences of that life. Now the writer of these poems say that there's something in all of this that fits. The words they use are words that do not fit with my understanding of God because they make a direct connection between uh, one's wrongdoing and God's punishment. And I don't think God operates that way at least not literally, but it does make sense, it does make sense to me to say that in destructive actions are the seeds of one's own destruction. One can't build a society based on injustice and expect that society to last. And that's what's, what's going on here as these 
writers were writing lamentations. And consider the words of Jesus 600 years later in read in Luke's Gospel. He too saw the fate of a culture built on injustice, and he wept. If only you had recognized this day the things that make for peace. If only you had changed your path, turned another way, you would have not walked into destruction. Or consider the news that we ourselves hear this day. Our planet is hurting, or more than that, our planet is in crisis. We can't continue to live life as usual. We can't continue to build a world based on injustice and greed and uncontrollable consumerism or any assumption that one particular group of people is entitled to a certain way of life at the expense of all other life. With Jeremiah, with Jesus, we stand in a very dark place, looking out over our world and crying in anguish. But yet, in this hard place, we have heard a call. The call of this congregation, and I would say, of every Christian in one way or another, is to let God's love soak into us and change us. To let God's love into every hard place within us, and then take that love out into this very hurting world and discover how we can be a part of healing that hurt. To look for it, to recognize it, and then to pursue the things that make for peace. Now that's very easy to say, but as we look at it, very hard to do. And hard places can also be very lonely places. In fact, one of the things that makes any place either within ourselves or around us, a hard place, is that feeling that we are alone. It might be an individual aloneness, or it could be a sense of aloneness, a aloneness that a group of people carry around. We are the only ones. That deep loneliness can isolate and immobilize us. And that, I propose for this morning, is where gratitude comes in. Because it's in these hard places that as people of faith, we discover the depth of our connection with God. It's in these hard places, they and we have to discover gratitude. 